Well, hi, everyone. I'm Joel Polis. I was brought here by Roger Walker for my participation in John Carpenter's iconic The Thing. And I've been in, I don't know, a dozen movies and a hundred TV shows, lots of theater, Shakespeare being my favorite. And this is Lasher Pepper. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. How are you? I'm good. The, the heat of summer is over, almost. They yeah. usually... In California, there's usually an Indian summer, which hits in the first week of October. So I think it's going to be next weekend. And um, I'm well, I'm healthy and uh, uh, curious and in good shape. Yeah, it's great to hear. Awesome. Got a birthday coming up. When? October 3rd. It's yours? Yeah. Nice. Sweet. I'll have to uh, write that down. (laughs) Who would have thought? I never right. thought I'd get this old. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till your time comes. <laughs> You'll have the same reaction. I'm what? Right. <laughs> I used to be the youngest person in the room, always. And then suddenly, about three years ago, I realized I'm the oldest person. In really? Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's really amazing. It's really funny. That's funny because, I mean, I'm the same way. Usually I'm the youngest in a room, like for my whole life so far. Yeah, um, but I should appreciate it while it lasts, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you got another about another forty five years before you have to worry about it or so. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Uh, and I was wondering, do you have any uh, new projects coming up? No, I'm kind of taking a break. I'm actually on a more somber note. Uh, I am caretaking for two uh, beloved people in my life who have cancer. My, I have an identical twin brother showed up on my doorstep two years ago with renal cancer. I'm sorry. And he's uh... getting better, but he kind of, I haven't lived with the guy in 53 years. So suddenly it's like, right. Who the hell are you? You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love you, but what, <laughs> you know? Right. So I've been looking after him and he's doing very well. He's doing immunotherapy. So I'm not worried about him. And then my I guess she's my ex-girlfriend, but we've always, we've stayed very close. And about 15 months ago, she showed up with stage four breast cancer, um, metastasized into her bones. So on weekends, I spend time in Carlsbad looking after her. And uh, that's been a little more dicey, but you know, uh, everything's fine, all's well. And it's uh, been a really interesting 20 months for in I can imagine. Life. Yeah. Oh, you know, as an actor, you're, what am I doing? How do I look? How much, how's my weight? Do I look good? Do I, right. What's the project? And then suddenly it's not about me. Right. I see. Yeah. And suddenly, and you discover so much about yourself that you go, oh, I don't quite like that. I think I'll change. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'll change that. <laughs> so, you know, life. Right. Kind of beats you up and then you take the lessons and go on hopefully a better person certainly hope so that was me too i did see that you uh start in a short film i what was it yeah, again called, two actors it's called later daters oh i was i was talking about uh another one i think it already came out like a oh, bit two ago out of work act, two out of work actors yes <laughs> it, yeah. i didn't see it uh yeah. sadly but i did see the trailer and it looked really funny it's really funny. And the writer director and I got together about a year and a half ago and he wrote this wonderful 12 minute film, which we've been showing at the short film festivals around town uh, called later daters. Mm. And I got Tommy Waits from the thing. Oh, sweet. And he couldn't do it. Then I got David Clennon who played Palmer. He's in it. And I got, uh, and David's an Emmy award winner. And I got Jeff Kober, who's an Emmy Award winner, Carolyn Hennessy, who's won an Emmy Award. And um, I, I got um, uh, um, Daniel Sakapa. So we have a hilarious 12 minute short about men still acting badly in their later years trying to pick up girls. Right. <laughs> Very funny. Later years. Awesome. Where, where can people see this besides is it just film festival exclusive at the moment now? it's the film festivals we'll we'll release it and i'll let you know right yeah yeah i would love to uh get a peek at it myself yeah yeah uh That's now obviously to uh genre fans you're most well known for uh the thing 
So yes. uh, I was just curious, what was it like doing that film? And how do you kind of look back at it, at that experience nowadays? Well, I love the 1951 version. Um, that's the year I was born. And mm. um, when I was a kid, they used to play it on Saturday afternoons, like once a year. And it scared the hell out of me. So I, when the audition came up, I thought, oh my God, the thing, you know? Right. And, uh, and then I read the script and it was way better than the first one. They went back to the 1939 short story, Who Goes There, by a guy named Campbell. And it's, it's just amazing how it, it's a story, you know, about people confined to a place and there's a menace. And they don't know where it's coming from and who has it and what's going on. So in the 50s, when the first movie was made, it was, a, I mean, the last words of the film, look to the skies, look, and it's about the communist threat to Western society. In 1981, when we did it, you could liken it to the AIDS epidemic, you know? Right. And now, and now the COVID epidemic or fascism yeah. in the United States. I mean, it's just amazing how the story, the through line, uh, it just holds up. And I thought, yeah. John, uh, I just lucked out getting into the movie and um, uh, worked with a fantastic cast of theater actors and a couple of movie stars and uh, had a blast. Sweet. Nice. It was so much fun. Roger, you have no idea how much fun. <laughs> I mean, what could be better, man? I was 30 right. years old and you know, we're on a glacier in Alaska or we're in the valley in, in at Universal Studios and they're treating us like kings. And, you know, and then we go up and we shoot, we play, we play space alien up there. And, you know, I mean, right. it's fantastic. Must have been a dream come true, pretty much. It was a dream come true. And uh, Je the general John Carpenter mastered his troops brilliantly and uh, created a film that unfortunately, because of Universal's screw ups around marketing it, right, didn't do nearly as well in the opening weekend as it might have. But over time, I mean, I just read some kind of a poll that uh, some of the 10 most influent, it's in one of the 10 most influential movies in terms of creativity of the last 30, 40 years. Yeah. <clears throat> and just in general, I notice it's like one of the most popular. And uh, well spoken of uh, horror movies, but I mean, also movies in general, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's been a, a, a great ride and I'm just thrilled to be in a cult classic, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. you're still here talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> right. And people keep asking me questions about it. Yeah, so, I bet. Don't you, you got do questions? Uh, conventions? Um... I do the conventions. I there was one a week ago in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a hot spot for COVID, and I just mm. couldn't afford to get that because of my two charges. Right. Um, so I had to turn it down. But everybody who went had a blast and did very well. And they're lots of fun. And um, I did one in Germany about 10 years ago, and that was great. And you know, all over the country. Um so that's kind of fun, but, um, and I'm still friends with everybody in the cast. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're awesome. good friends. It's like when a play does very well, you, and with an ensemble, you just develop a closeness because of your yeah. shared experience that you never let go. It's like going to high school with a bunch of guys you really love, or I was yeah. a gym. I was a gymnast in high school and at university and I have the friends from that gymnastic team in high school and university that are still dear friends of mine. You know, you just right. had experience that helped create you, you know, yeah, for sure. Your life. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. <laughs> That's actually what um, James Cameron used in aliens. Like at the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where the entire spaceship crew is together. Um, and in this scene, you really see that the crew and everyone knows each other really well. And there's a lot of yes. chemistry going on. And they yeah. actually shot this scene last, even though it's the first scene in the movie. Because they, they had time to establish the relationships yeah. 
Yeah. And that came out in the thing also. I mean, one of the For sure. qualities yeah. of the movie is that we develop relationships and those relationships show up on screen. Yeah. And, uh, and John was wise to cast a bunch of theater actors who understood what an ensemble really meant. How right. it worked. Yeah. Nice. And, um, you know, even to this day, <laughs> at, th at this point, 40 years later, you know, um, people still theorize about uh, your character's death. Um, yes. Some people say it was uh, suicide. Some say you were murdered by the thing. Some people say you were accidentally burnt while fighting the thing. What do you personally think happened? Hmm. What do you think <laughs> I figured you'd ask that. That's all you're getting out of me, Jack. <laughs> Ambiguity. Well, actually, what... <laughs> um, I, John filmed a death scene in Los Angeles. And so I end up on a door with a shovel through my chest and I'm covered with ice and blood and everything. Yeah, and he got to Alaska and he went, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. I was still in Halloween. This is not <laughs> this wasn't a slasher. Funny. Movie. What's the right. motivation of the creature to stay alive? Yeah. So it wouldn't do that. And so he created that scene for me in Alaska, which we shot up there. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I was also wondering, did you ever see um the 2011 prequel to the thing i and did i did what did you think of that one um I, I, the only thing that stayed with me was uh, uh that big norwegian actor that big guy with the red beard and he showed up in game of thrones i think and he was right in, yeah he was terrific and the woman was terrific but the story when they went back to the when they went to the flying saucer they lost me uh, there was a moment where somebody was hiding in a kitchen and somebody bent over backwards, kind of came crawling through. And that the visual was scary. That would, but that that's all I really remember about it. It, right. it didn't make much of an impression on me, you know. Right. And um, are you much of a horror fan yourself in general? Um, yeah. And I'm not a slasher fan. <laughs> I'm not a, I, you know, if like The Exorcist, I loved classic. Uh, the uh, the exorcism of Emily Rose was oh, amazing. Sweet. The Conjuring, um, The Haunting, some horror films I I really like. Um, a, a reimagining of the Frankenstein myth that that that's great. Dracula is one of my favorite books too, but um. I uh, I love <laughs> Alien. Oh yeah, good one too. And yeah. the aliens, and that was all great and uh, all that. But horror, it's not so big on my list anymore. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, here are some more random philosophical type questions. So sure. I was just wondering, uh, what makes you smile? What makes me smile? We're getting political now. <laughs> when Republicans make idiots of themselves, which is every day. Right. It can so certainly be pretty I funny. Care, I don't care what, you know, your audience has got to know that there is 60% of the country thinks one way and 35 to 40% of my country thinks another way. I guess kind of like Brexit. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Whether you like it or not, we're all connected. And I know that you don't like that sometimes, but your religion is no better than my religion. You know, your sexuality is no different really than mine in its own way. Where you come from, we're all on the same planet and we're facing the same problems and we need to get together on this or we're not going to last. It's really true. Yeah, yeah. well, that's what I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We're only human after all. Yeah. Everyone. And a good joke. Mel Brooks makes me laugh. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Stephen Colbert makes me laugh. Noah Trevor makes me laugh. Uh, who else? Um, uh, I don't know. 
good comedians make me laugh. Sure. Got to yeah. get a good laugh in every once in a while, right? Yeah. 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 And, I, try um, lot, I try to laugh a lot and long and loud because it's a saving grace. For sure. Mm. Yes. Um, besides the apple, that also keeps the doctor away sometimes. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, the holidays, summer holidays kind of over now. Um, I so didn't have a summer because of my responsibilities. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was just I live, I live I live 12 minutes from the ocean. I can walk to the ocean in 12 right. minutes. I have not been in the water yet this year, this summer. Really? Yeah. I just wow. I've been busy or other things have been taking priority. Yeah, I actually, love going, yeah, I go, I, I go, I ride my bike down there, I'll walk along, but I just haven't gotten into the water yet. Right. I actually didn't myself, I realize now I did go there, but yeah. because I also live like 15 minutes away from the beach. Where? Holland, Netherlands. Oh, you're in the Netherlands. Are you in Danach or are you? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's exactly where I'm at. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I met a girl in Danach. Really? Yeah. When I was when? eight, I was 18 and I was traveling with a theater troupe. And we we flew into Amsterdam, and I hitchhiked to Rotterdam, and then to Tanakh, and um, met a gal. And I hitchhiked all summer until I had to go to the Edinburgh Festival in August, and showed up, and then we performed there for the summer. That's really cool. Yeah, oh, it was great. It was great. Nice. Yeah, you have a slight ac accent, and I, I I had assumed that you're English, but you're not. No, you're, yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I love the Netherlands and I love Amsterdam. Have nice. you guys fixed up those canals yet? <laughs> Not really, I think. I mean, there's been a big effort to kind of shore them up and everything with the yeah. water and everything. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do know we have uh, we have some things also uh, in terms of the ocean. Uh, well, the oh, yeah. sea um, fixed now, yes. but uh, I mean, the danger is still always there, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's getting crazy all over. Yeah, but I was just wondering, I mean, you already talked about going to Holland now and hitchhiking there, but uh, what is your all-time favorite traveling memory? Oh, oh my God. I have uh, quite a few. Nice. Um, I think New Zealand. Um, I was so stunned. There are only a million people on the South Island. So you can go half a day without seeing anybody or, you know, and it's not developed. So I got to look at the earth. I, this is true of also the, uh, the Andes in, in the, uh, Peru when I went to Machu Picchu. There are moments when you see the earth as it's been for millions of years unchanged. Right. And so much of New Zealand, it's just raw. And it was so beautiful to me. I'm a backpacker and I was a rock climber and I've done some uh, mountain climbing, some flatone. And uh, I just, um, I love the outdoors. And so New Zealand was just such a treat. But then so was Spain and Thailand and Israel and, and Jordan. And I mean, it, you know, the world is wonderful yeah, place. For sure. Yeah. Did you ever, uh, just coincidentally, since you traveled so much, I'll ask, did you ever go to uh, Istanbul in Turkey? No, that's actually on my list of places. Really? Pretty soon. Yeah. I'm waiting for things to chill out a little bit. Right. More. I can imagine. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm planning to go there January. So it was like, maybe you have advice for somewhere to go or something, you know? No, but I would love to go to Ephesus, you know, on the, on the, the, the Western coast, because that's where Troy was or supposedly and i want to see the ruins I, i'm a big fan of the archaeological ruins whether they're in mexico or belize or petra in jordan and and uh, I, I want to go to Angkor wat in cambodia and um yeah i really love the ruins so i'd like to see troy and i haven't been to greece yet although i've spent time in italy and rome and all that so I got a lot of traveling ahead. I'm I'm kind of on a hiatus for a couple of years. Right. This, Sweet. Yeah. I would love to do that myself too more in the future, actually. Yeah. Awesome. You'll you'll meet a lot of lancemen out there. There are a lot of people traveling, young people traveling. Right. 
Nice. Very fun, I would imagine. Yeah. And uh, final question. If your life was a movie, how would the movie end? Oh, wow. If my life was a movie, I think I'd have a bottle of scotch and I'd say, why don't we just wait here for a little while and <laughs> see what happens? Sweet. <laughs> Well, so good to talk to you, Roger. For sure, it was. Yeah, I'm sorry with all the blips we've had, but it really has been my pleasure. It's been you great. Seem a, you seem a lovely young man, and I wish you all the best always. Enjoy every moment. It I goes certainly by. will. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, brother. Okay.